Hello guys and welcome back to Freedom Forest and welcome to this part two of setting up a drip line irrigation system in our polytunnels here. So in part one we looked at the type of pipe I chose, why I chose that one and also getting it initially installed and pegged down into the ground. Now the first part of this video we're going to be looking at the water pressure required to actually use this type of pressure compensating drip line. As I mentioned in the first part of this video, we are off grid here, so we don't have a mains water supply. So we rely on rainwater in these two tanks here above me. Um, they're both 5,000 litres uh, each. And at the moment, I currently have them set up with quite uh, unprofessional, just normal garden hoses. And as a result of that, I've now learned that the narrower pipe you have, that reduces the water pressure as you go over a length of pipe. Now, I have this small hose pipe here, normal garden hose size, running probably about 30, 40 meters along this hedge along the back here over to the polytunnels. So we'll go along there now and see what our current water pressure is. I'm at the point here where that hose comes out of the hedge and the polytunnels are just behind the camera here. And what I'm actually in the process of doing is installing this larger bore pipe here. This has got an internal diameter of one inch. So this is going to be the first time for me as well to see whether this theory is going to pay off. I'm going to, I've got the water turned on now. So what I'm going to do is I've got this jug here and it's a measuring jug. It unfortunately doesn't have litres, but it has got pints on it and a few other measurements as well. So I've got this turned on. I'm going to take this pipe off now and count how many seconds it takes to reach. We we'll go for one pint of water. All right, here we go. Right, we'll count how many seconds this takes to get to one pint then. One, two, three, four. Okay, roughly about four seconds there to get to one pint of water so that gives you an idea what our water pressure is. Let's test our new pipe here as well it's not all fully connected up or attached properly yet but we'll see if this has increased the pressure then so we'll go to one point again and see how long it takes. One, two, okay so just over two seconds it's already gone to the next measurement over a pint so I guess you could say that's pretty much doubled the, whether you'd say it's doubled the pressure or just doubled the amount we're getting down it, I don't know, but it's made a 50% increase, which is good news. Okay, so that's pretty epic. That only took two seconds, just over two seconds to get to the next measurement over a pint. So that's half the time um, that it took for our standard smaller pipe, which is a garden hose size. And that's also, 14 ounces of flour apparently as well. So this type of drip line works best at a water pressure of between 0.5 bar and 1.75 bar with a maximum pressure, if you've got a high pressure water in your house or whatever, of four bar. So I don't actually know much about all the bar type things. All I do know is that in four seconds we get one pint of water so what I'm going to do now is connect this up with our existing thinner pipes to see if that's enough to actually run this. So one of the cool things about this is as well, you can actually use normal hose lock type um, hose connections. Um, we will look into all the different fittings and stuff like that I'm going to be using soon. I won't be using this, but I'm going to connect it temporarily at the moment we use these watering lances in here. So let's take that off and see whether this will be enough pressure to run it as it is. Right, I'm hearing some hissing already. Let's bring the camera over and see what happens. Don't know if you guys can hear that. And I've put a end cap in the end, just to block off the end, obviously. Oh, I'm starting to see some water down here. Very exciting. 
we are getting water out all the holes. At this end, the moment of truth will be when it reaches the bottom, will it all be coming out of there and will we still be getting it from the top, at the top of the hill? Let's have a look down here. I'm seeing a bit of water there. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Looking good so far. Let's keep going down. Let's work our way down the bottom and see if it's coming out there yet. It's still making a bit of a hissing noise, so I think it's still getting the air out. It's down this far. Don't know if you can see that. Let's push that back in. Oh, I'm seeing water here as well. It's very exciting. Yeah, it's coming out down there. Is it coming out at the very bottom? Yes, it is. Right, okay. So now the question is, will it be still coming out at the top? So we can see roughly how much that's dripping there. And yeah, you can see that you wouldn't need it on for too long actually to, um, I don't know, maybe half an hour or something. We'll work out later how much this would drip out for half an hour usage. Wow, okay. So we're back at the top and it's still dripping beautifully. So that is really cool to see that even with that really low pressure we had initially, or much lower than a normal mains anyway, that is still working really beautifully. So if you're maybe wondering, I've only got a water bite in my allotment or something, will this work? I guess what you could do is do what I've done there and see when you open it up, if you're getting at least um, a pint in four seconds of time of water, then this should work for you. Um, but things you can do to increase that pressure is by having the tank as high as possible. That makes a massive difference. Um, and also obviously having your pipes as low as possible to the ground um, to maximize that difference, the gravity. If your pipe is coming along a bit of a distance before it reaches the bed you're gonna water, try and use a larger diameter pipe if you can, if possible. Okay, so I've now got the water pipe coming down into the ground there. There's an elbow joint and then it continues down this way. I've tried to make it at least a foot deep because last time it wasn't deep and I put a fork for it. And at the entrance of each tunnel, we've got a T joint, which is then coming down and this will be then what connects onto our 
water and irrigation hose. Let's carry on down this way. Second one there. Coming in. And third one. I've just got an elbow joint on this one going into this tunnel, the third tunnel. I had considered actually continuing this on just down to here and then having like a little stand pipe thing coming up with a tap on but um, for now I'm going to leave it as this and can always do that at a later date. And for now I've just put little end caps in there because I've turned all the water on now and I've checked all the joints that there's no leaks anywhere so I can backfill my trenches then I can come back to um, connecting all of the drip lines up next. All right, so just got the first tunnel done on the inside. So you can see our main pipe coming in there, the 32 millimeter, and then it comes to a three quarter inch um, to half an inch uh, kind of like barbed connector here. Uh, that's kind of like a normal hose pipe size that you'd screw onto like a brass tap outside your house. Um, and then I've used this suction hose I already had, which we use um, for kind of just as watering hose. Um, it's nice because it's got this spiral on and it's very dense, so it doesn't kink like normal hose. And um, it's the same diameter as kind of garden hose, um, but it's slightly smaller on the inside. So you just have to uh, heat it up before you put it on there, just so it comes a little bit more stretchy. So coming down into that, then I've got it going into a four-way connector there. So then one comes down this way. This will obviously all be buried. And I've left this, these kind of just out to show you right now. But this one coming up here is our main watering hose that's got the lance on there. So we can still manually water with that. So that will just be coming out there. Then I've got these two metal pegs I'm going to knock in before I bury it, just so if this gets tugged on, it's held in there nicely. And then coming down into our first drip line then. So first of all, got an on-off connection there, which I've done on each individual drip line. And then what we have here is an inline filter. And this is removable, the filter inside, so you just unscrew this little bit. And then there's like a solid plastic kind of mesh in there, which you can clean out. And that's important for us because it's coming from, you know, um, it's not drinking kind of tap water coming into this. So the little holes could get blocked otherwise. So coming down there then, so you've already seen that it goes in a spiral shape. The middle one comes in here, so this is as you come through the door now. That one comes in and it's got a right angle here going on to another tap with the filter there. And that's for our middle bed, which we've currently got our early potatoes in there and Laurie's yoga mat down there. And the third and final one is coming to here. And I didn't order enough of the little filters, so I've just got this ready to install that online filter, inline filter, sorry. And for the third one, so we continue on, I'll do the other tunnel now. And these are the pumps that we've got for pumping the water up into the two big header tanks. And this one here is a petrol pump. It's a two-stroke one. It's got the same kind of engine that you find on a strimmer or hedge cutter. And this was a real bargain actually. It's a Mitsubishi one and I got it out of boot sale for I think it was only 30 quid and they're a couple of hundred pound new and it was actually literally new condition when I got it like three or four years ago. So that goes really strong, really powerful that is. Um, lasts for ages. I can fill up a whole tank on one of those little fuel tanks there which doesn't hold much fuel. Um, and that can pump actually, believe it or not, up to, it's quite a lot, 35 metres of head. So you can pump 35 metres vertically if you wanted to with that pump. So yeah, crazy power you get from the fossil fuels.
I guess that's why they've taken so long to form in the earth. Um, this now though is what we use. This is an electric pump which we can run off the solar power. And this one only uses about 350 watts. It's made by Clark. And what I need to do for it though is install this. Uh, it's called a, what would you call it? Kind of like a one way kind of valve or non return valve. And uh, it's important to have this on here because it's not a self priming pump. You get pumps uh, which are self priming and some aren't. So both of these you have to prime yourself um, basically by adding water to the top of it before you turn it on. So um, this will go here, I'll run through this pipe and so when I add some water first it won't just run straight through and out the other side. Because I did have like a filter thing you put into the water which had one of those on but I've changed it now so I'm going to install this brass one in here. All right, we're now in the second tunnel, which Laurie mainly looks after, and I've got these all set up as well now, um, other than the middle one, because uh, we've still got some salad in there. So uh, in a couple of weeks' time, just before mid-May, we'll take all of this out, and then we can install our third one. So let's have a look, Laurie. Is it going to work? I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. Oh, here it goes. You might just be able to hear that hissing noise. And then, just see there, in a second, hopefully, all of our little drippers will be emitting. Here we go. And then, you tend not to see so much unless you lift it up, but when you lift it, you can see them then start to drip. Great, okay. So that's one side. Should we go for the other side as well? The other side's on already. The other side's on, okay. Right, let's just check that. And then we're gonna go for the um, the triple whammy. Let's, Laurie's already got this side covered up with the wood chips now. So I said, because you can bury this type of pipe. So if I just lift that up and you might just be able to see down there. That's going nicely. Okay, so we're running to there. Let's go to the third tunnel, the other tunnel now, and see if we can do more. Right, just in the other tunnel now, let's see how many of these bad boys we can have on at once with our new increased water pressure. And I'll give Laurie a shout in a second. takes a while just for the initial kind of like air to purge from the system. Okay, let's turn our middle one on. And the other side one here. Just giving it 20 seconds to kind of get all the air out of the system. So that one there is working. See all the drips coming out. Check our middle one. Yep. This one here. Wow, okay, so we've got three on here. Bearing in mind before we could only have one soaker hose on. And Laurie, are you are still working in there? Yeah, they are. The drips have slowed down. I don't know if you can hear her, but she said they're all still working, but the drips are slightly less. So that is fantastic. We can have six soaker hoses on um, from that one one inch pipe. So Laurie's just covering up our drip lines again. This was the wood chips we initially had on the bed, so we raked them off. So she's just getting those back on. It's very dusty in here, yeah. Epic. Good water in. Yeah, we can really soak all these beds now. Just leave them on. We've had plenty of rainwater this spring so far, so um, we've got no problems with having enough to really get these beds now 
really saturated before we start to plant all of our lovely, more tropical type plants like the tomatoes and the um, melons. melons and the chili peppers, all those beautiful things. So now all the pipes are installed. Um, we've got this nice on and off here, a bit more meaty than our old one here. I'll just leave that in place. It's still connected to the water tanks just in case we wanted to use a, just another hose along here or something. And I've now got all of those trenches you saw buried and some wood chips back on top of it as well. And same inside the doors, all of that's now covered up nicely. And each one appears from the soil with this nice suction hose. And we've got the on and off connection there to turn it on. And we've got our inline filters there, which you can easily take apart. You just unscrew this bit. And there's a little bit of plastic in there you just wash out. And our two varieties of the super early potatoes we're growing are loving it as well. And in our third tunnel that we're currently using for propagation this year, I've currently just set up a, another lance here. With a nice kind of like soaker action on it. So that's great. And then I've got the ability now with the connections I've put on there to, in time when this becomes beds either side, we can have a couple more drip lines come in along the sides of this one as well. And very excited about this because we're going to have some stuff like lemons, oranges, um, peaches, nectarines, all sorts of crazy stuff in here in the future. So very excited. So the last thing for me to do through here now is just come through and cover the beds back up with the wood chips. The other thing I wanted to show you guys is in combination to having the three drip lines that we can turn on simultaneously now, we also have the ability to water manually um, using these lances as well. They're really nice ones actually. Aluminium, um, nothing rusts. And even with the watering lines on, see here we still have enough pressure to have quite a nice kind of like soaker little shower head on there as well. Whereas before we could only just water one of these at a time and it just came through like, not like this, it just came out dripping. So yeah, completely over the moon with how it's gone. And I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video and look forward to catching you again soon. Peace and plants. plants.